I find it very, very easy to be true. Welcome to Miss Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the cream of the country music crop. But you don't know what he means to me. Number 30, Tennessee Whiskey, Chris Stapleton. One of the first things that leap out at the listener from this version of Tennessee Whiskey from Chris Stapleton is the production. Used to spend my nights out in ballroom. The song sounds crisply modern, yet simultaneously vintage, possessing a nice separation of instruments to go along with Stapleton's vocals. And the production highlights his soulful, almost bluesy delivery. I've looked for love in all the same old places. Chris Stapleton clearly possesses a love for this song, an appreciation that seems to date back to its famous 1981 recording from David Allen Coe. As a result, his Tennessee whiskey manages to transcend generations to find a whole new audience. Number 29, Harper Valley PTA, Jeannie C. Riley. Every musical genre possesses its idea of a novelty song. This takes nothing away from the quality at play, of course, with Jeannie C. Riley's Harper Valley PTA existing as one of the best. Well, her daughter came home one afternoon and didn't even stop to play. Riley made history with the song's meteoric chart success, becoming the first woman to top both the Billboard Top 100 and U.S. Hot Country Singles charts with Harper Valley PTA. Songwriter extraordinaire Tom T. Hall crafted an absolutely scathing critique of small-town life, while Riley lends the song her own charisma, flair, and sass. And they were sure surprised when Mrs. Johnson wore her miniskirt into the room. This was a star-making turn for Riley, whose natural beauty imbued single, LP, and compilation album artwork in record racks across the country. The song was even adapted into a 1978 movie starring Barbara Eden. Day my mama socked it to the Harper Valley PTA. Number 28, Knoxville Girl, The Leuven Brothers. The subject matter of a murder ballad can often be, well, depressing and downright murderous. I met a little girl in Knoxville, a town we all know well. Knoxville Girl is one of the most grim and shocking examples of this genre, and perhaps nowhere has it been better performed than with this version by the Leuven Brothers. These siblings were masters of close harmony singing, and the effects of their combined efforts are chilling yet also hypnotic. Took her by her golden curls and a drug her. The Leuven Brothers had a bevy of amazing tunes to their credit, from I Don't Believe You've Met My Baby to the infamous Satan Is Real. But Knoxville Girl serves as a great place for newcomers to discover the pair's enviable talents. The girl I love so well. Number 27. Man, I Feel Like a Woman, Shania Twain. Robert John Mutt Lang is no stranger to collaborating on hit records. I'm going out tonight, I'm feeling all right. The now legendary producer gained fame in the heavy metal community after working with bands like Def Leppard, and he adapted his approach for his success with former wife Shania Twain. Best thing about a The results were on Twain's Come On Over album and this international smash single, Man, I Feel Like a Woman. The song from top to bottom feels unapologetically pop and practically shimmers with studio finesse. Twain's massive charisma and confident vocals sell the song and accompanying video for all it's worth, retaining country twang while also boldly going for crossover chart success. Man, I feel like a woman. <laughs> Number 26, Sunday Morning Coming Down, Chris Christopherson. There are a number of great versions of Sunday Morning Coming Down to enjoy, from Ray Stevens to one from the immortal Johnny Cash. However, we also got to recommend the version that was cut by the song's actual songwriter, Chris Christopherson. Well, I woke up Sunday morning with no way to hold my head, didn't hurt. 
This take from Christofferson's 1970 debut album is absolutely steeped in the warm, analog production style of that decade. Christofferson's vocals on Sunday Morning Coming Down are drenched with echo and reverb, while the electric piano and drum accompaniment lend the song a folk rock backbeat. The end results speak for themselves. Really, a melancholic ode to those bittersweet mornings where capturing an optimistic mood feels like a challenge. Sunday morning coming down. Number 25. Kiss an Angel Good Morning, Charlie Pride. There are any number of songs that well represent just how much of a legend Charlie Pride is within the world of country music. Never I chance to meet some old friends on the street. Kiss an Angel Good Morning is one of those classically composed tunes that could have probably been sung by any country star, but it's pride that makes the song truly his own and something special. His rich and textured voice lends the otherwise straightforward material layers of realism and depth that help it transcend its to-the-point composition. You've got to kiss an angel good morning. Country music hasn't historically been a place in which African-American artists have flourished, but it's artists like Charlie Pride and songs like Kiss an Angel Good Morning that help pave the way. And love her like the devil when you get back home. Number 24. Before He Cheats, Carrie Underwood. There's absolutely no doubt that Carrie Underwood is one of the true success stories to spawn from American Idol. Right now, he's probably slow dancing with a beach blonde tramp and she's probably getting thirsty. That said, her musical success wasn't necessarily a foregone conclusion, particularly given that show's track record. It was with Before He Cheats where Carrie Underwood's stature within the world of country music became assured because the success of this song struck like a bolt of lightning. It's the lyrical content that hammers home Underwood's credibility as a storyteller, bringing to life the words of songwriters Josh Keir and Chris Tompkins. Before He Cheats is well-produced, but not too slick, and retains enough honky-tonk soul and swagger to make it a full-blown modern country classic. Number 23, Wagon Wheel, Old Crow Medicine Show. This song certainly possesses a strange and piecemeal history. Headed down south to the land of the pines, I'm thumbing my way to North Carolina. Folk rock icon Bob Dylan actually composed the chorus way back in 1973, but the song was left unfinished until Nashville's Old Crow Medicine Show added verses and completed the work. So rock me, mama, like a wagon wheel. Rock me, mama, any way you feel. The final version of Wagon Wheel melts together bluegrass, country, and folk-tinged Americana to create pure musical magic. The spirit of Dylan's original version can be heard within an intentionally nasal approach to the vocals, while internal melodies stir the show in a manner that feels wistful and nostalgic. Wagon Wheel would also get recorded by Darius Rucker, but it's the Old Crow Medicine Show version that stands alone as something truly awesome. Hey. Number 22, Should Have Been a Cowboy, Toby Keith. We admit, courtesy of the red, white, and blue, the angry American would have been a more predictable choice for a Toby Keith song. However, we ultimately chose to go with this comparative, upbeat, and optimistic cut from the late Keith's debut album. I bet you never heard old Marshall Dillon say. The production is surprisingly bright sounding and should have been a cowboy actually wouldn't sound out of place on a rock record, minus the country instrumentation. This is a testament to Keith's ability to combine the old with the new, adding a fresh coat of paint to that reliable fence. I should have been a cowboy. I should have learned to roll. Major chord phrasings and Keith's unapologetically bold vocals make Should Have Been a Cowboy sound large and in charge, an anthemic crowd pleaser. Should have been a cowboy. Number 21, I Hope You Dance, Leanne Womack featuring Sons of the Desert. 
The late 90s and early millennium were halcyon periods for country music crossover success, particularly when it came to female artists. I hope you never lose your sense of wonder. Leanne Womack is a wonderful singer whose career followed in the paths of artists like Faith Hill, Shania Twain, and The Chicks. This wasn't a new phenomenon, of course, and the pop instrumentation and arrangements of I Hope You Dance weren't born in a vacuum. I hope you still feel small when you stand beside the ocean. Instead, Womack's bold career choice echoes the bravery of Dolly Parton before her, since I Hope You Dance never goes half measures with the former's voice. The song is, honestly, just beautiful. An emotional tune that balances melancholy and hope in a manner that truly deserves all the flowers. I hope we're years Number 20. El Paso, Marty Robbins this one's for the old schoolers. Nighttime would find me in Rose's Cantina. Music would play and Felina would whirl. Marty Robbins' Gunfighter Ballads and Trail Songs LP from 1959 is a classic from the country music genre, featuring an iconic cover shot that immediately jumps out from the racks of vinyl on a shelf. The Spanish guitar instantly puts you in a time and place. An old west cantina south of the border where danger lurks around every corner. Bobby Sykes and Jim Glazer sing the song with amazing skill, harmonizing beautifully as they tell a tale of love, death, yearning, and loss. Back in El Paso, my life would be worthless. Everything's gone in life, nothing is left. The protagonist's story in El Paso predictably ends in tragedy. But let's be honest, would we really want it any other way? Lena, Number 19. Goodbye Earl, The Chicks Songwriting is a key component to a great country music song, with many compositions being performed by multiple singers, sometimes charting in completely different decades. Want to look all around this town and all she found was Earl. The Chicks didn't write Goodbye Earl, but their version from 1999 was released a number of years after its original songwriter, Dennis Lind, had his version recorded by a different band. Goodbye Earl deals with the controversial subject of domestic violence, both lyrically and with its accompanying music video. But Earl walked right through that restraining order and put her in intensive care. Despite this, the song was a hit for the chicks, with a lot of money and attention raised to benefit battered women's shelters in the wake of its success. Goodbye, Earl. We need a break. Number 18. Hello Darlin', Conway Twitty Some songs are just born for the live arena. In this case, Conway Twitty's Hello Darlin' was one of the legend's go-to openers, a bittersweet ballad full of the sort of love and loss so often found in some of the best country songs. Watch that darling, how am I doing? Twitty's voice almost sounds at the point of breaking when he sings the line, Gotta Go Now. And it's this believability that lends Hello Darlin' such an emotional resonance. Goodbye, darling. Gotta go now. There's a pathos to Twitty's performance that lifts the song's arrangements from good to great, all the while making Hello Darlin' one of country music's most recognizable standards. I'm back, darling. I'll be waiting for you. Number 17. Take Me Home, Country Roads, John Denver There's a certain wistfulness and innocence to John Denver's smash hit, Take Me Home, Country Roads. Almost heaven, West Virginia The song's melodic nature is evocative, painting a picture of long drives or perhaps hitchhiking, 1970s style, and thoughtful contemplation. Denver's vocals are clear as a crystal stream untouched by grit, yet possessing a likability that's uniquely John and John's alone. All my memories gather around her. The backing vocals accompany Denver beautifully, while acoustic and steel guitar interplay make Country Roads a song we can spin over and over again with no worries whatsoever. Take me home, that country road. Number 16, 
It wasn't God who made Honky Tonk Angels, Kitty Wells. The term standard comes up again and again within country music. Those songs that make up the great book of music covered again and again by different artists. As I sit here tonight, the jukebox playing. It wasn't God who made Honky Tonk Angels is one of those standards, a tune that lives forever thanks to the magic present within its construction and the performances of those who try their musical hand. Kitty Wells first made the song popular back in 1952, with words and music composed by J.D. J. Miller. It's a shame that all the blame is on us women. Wells was the first female solo artist to hit the Billboard Country number one with her version, an ode to cheating men and the dance hall girls who, to paraphrase Hank Williams, live on the wild side of life. Number 15. Mamas Don't Let Your Babies Grow Up to Be Cowboys Waylon Jennings and Willie Nelson Mamas Don't Let Your Babies Grow Up to Be Cowboys was a mild hit for songwriter Ed Bruce when he included it on his 1976 solo album, but most country fans are probably more familiar with the more famous cover version from 1978. Cowboys ain't easy to love and they're harder to hold. Waylon Jennings and Willie Nelson gave the tune an up-tempo spit shine with airtight musical backing on their studio rendition. Cowboys like smoky old pool rooms and clear mountain morning. The pair also dropped plenty of their own classic charisma onto the track, giving Mamas Don't Let Your Babies Grow Up To Be Cowboys a fresh lease on life for some new fans. They'll never stay home and they're always alone, even with someone they love. Number 14. Where Were You When the World Stopped Turning? Alan Jackson. The world of country music, perhaps more than any other genre, delved deep into emotional catharsis and reflection after the events of September 11, 2001. Where were you when the world stopped turning on that September day? This owes largely to its uniquely American origins, as well as the patriotism that usually comes part and parcel with country music as a whole. Still, Where Were You When the World Stopped Turning is particularly poignant by anyone's standard, thanks to Alan Jackson's legitimately focused delivery. Did you notice the sunset the first time in ages to speak to some stranger on the street? There isn't a lot of rah-rah jingoism or revenge speak here but rather a moment of connection with all of those who felt something on that day. There's a sense of shared loss and reverence for the dead, and a memory that many of us will never forget. Faith, hope, and love are some good things he gave us, and the greatest is love. Number 13. The Devil Went Down to Georgia, The Charlie Daniels Band the Devil Went Down to Georgia is something of an outlier on this list, in that it absolutely rocks. The Devil Went Down to Georgia, he was looking for a soul to steal. He was in a bind because he was way behind and he was willing to make a deal. Country music has always shined with its contemplative nature, but who said there was anything wrong with letting loose once in a while? Charlie Daniels' musical knowledge is set on full display with The Devil Went Down to Georgia, taking his experience as a sideman and songwriter by utilizing both hard rock and soul to tell his tale. The boy said, my name's Johnny and it might be a sin, but I'll take your bet you're gonna regret cause I'm the best as ever been. The fiddle between Old Scratch and Johnny tosses bluegrass, rock, and even some funk into the mix with the end result being one of the most gleeful and fun country hits to ever cross over into mainstream radio. Number 12. Coal Miner's Daughter, Loretta Lynn It's difficult hedging out just one track from Loretta Lynn's storied career in country music. The Pill was a controversial anthem of female empowerment, while Ones on the Way humorously took a mirror image look into the life of a harried mother. Coal Miner's Daughter might be among the most personal and well-known songs from Lynn, and with good reason, because it's an all-time classic. Well, I was born to Coal Miner's Daughter. 
The song is an autobiographical tale of Loretta's childhood and upbringing, and boasts amazingly rich production by the engineering legend Owen Bradley. In the summertime, we didn't have shoes to wear. Meanwhile, Lynn's vocals are full of charisma and mesmerizing depth, capturing our imagination every time we hear them, right to the present day. Number 11. Friends in Low Places – Garth Brooks Garth Brooks is unquestionably one of the most well-known and popular names of modern-day country music, and Friends in Low Places is perhaps a fan favorite of his enviable musical repertoire. Blame it all on my roots, I showed up in boots, ruined your black tie fair. The song had been written and performed by a couple of other artists prior to Brooks getting his mitts on it, but his version definitely seemed to resonate with an audience ready to hear Garth deliver the goods. I'll just say goodnight and I'll show myself to the door. The man's vocal is full of sass and attitude, while the arrangements swing low and slow like a good barbecue. It's a meat and potatoes tune that begs for fun, perhaps slightly inebriated sing-alongs and good times. Number 10. Always On My Mind – Willie Nelson There's just something magical about the DNA of a truly great song, something that keeps bringing back, again and again, to singers that can work their own unique magic to the melody. Willie Nelson's On The Road Again is one. On the road again Just can't wait to get on the road again While Always On My Mind is another. Having been recorded by legends such as Elvis Presley and Brenda Lee over the years, Nelson lent his own unique stamp to the song in 1982, a decade after it was originally composed by songwriters Wayne Carson, Mark James, and Johnny Christopher. Tell me that your sweet love hasn't died. Willie's version had crossover success outside of the country music world, while retaining its soft, balladeering structure. It's just a tender and melancholic song that tugs the heartstrings every time. You were always on my mind. Number 9. Amarillo by Morning – George Strait George Strait's version of Amarillo by Morning was a hit for the Texas-born singer a decade after the tune was originally co-written and recorded by Terry Stafford back in 1973. The processed 80s production style doesn't hurt Strait's version in the slightest, with the end result sounding somewhat similar to George's other big hit, All My Exes Live in Texas. In Texas. I love to be. Here, both songs come across as smooth, but never soulless, and straight soulful vocal carries both tunes to the places they need to go. Amarillo by Morning may be a hard luck song about a rodeo rider, but George Strait sells it in a way that brings us nothing but joy. Amarillo is where I'll be. Number 8. The Gambler, Kenny Rogers. Some country music songs just seem destined to cross over into the cultural zeitgeist. The Gambler is one of those tunes, a defining song for Kenny Rogers from a career that spanned many different kinds of music. I met up with the gambler, we were both too tired to sleep. The Gambler is a little ways away from Rogers' beginnings as a psychedelic rock pioneer with his old group, The First Edition, and was actually the fourth time the tune had been recorded since being written by Don Schlitz in 1976. Cause every hand's a winner, and every hand's a loser. Rogers' version feels like pop country before pop country was a thing, although this doesn't diminish the work Rogers and producer Larry Butler brought to making the gambler their own. This song just seemed like it was waiting for Kenny to take hold and take control. You got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them. Number 7. Stand By Your Man, Tammy Wynette the world of country music has possessed so many defining and devastatingly talented female performers. Tammy Wynette, however, may be among the very best, the first lady of country music, if you will. Sometimes it's hard to be a woman. 
Her career saw plenty of hits, but there's one song that stands above it all, the iconic Stand By Your Man. Wynette's insanely powerful vocals sell this somewhat controversial song from first note to last, but particularly so during the finale, where she goes all out with her performance of its high notes. Keep giving all the love you can. The creative relationship between Wynette and producer Billy Sherrill perhaps never saw a more bountiful harvest than the glory that was Stand By Your Man. Stand by your man. Number 6. Your Cheatin' Heart Hank Williams with his Drifting Cowboys Hank Williams is often considered, and rightfully so, to be a defining personality of country music. His songs served as bedrocks for the entire genre, inspiring generations of musicians that stretch all the way to the modern day. I'm So Lonesome I Could Cry is just one of Williams' classic killers. I'm so lonesome I could cry. While Your Cheatin' Heart may be among his best-known songs, it's a classic tale of heartbreak, a country standard highlighted by Williams' iconic delivery and influential songwriting skill. Your cheating heart will make you weak. It's an easy entry for fans new to classic country music, while also one of the best examples of the genre at its most pure and undiluted. Your cheating heart will tell Number 5. Jolene Dolly Parton The words legend and talent get tossed around a lot, but they take on a whole new meaning when referencing the wonderful, inimitable Dolly Parton. Jolene, 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 Jolene. Want proof? How about the fact that the 9 to 5 singer told The Bobby Bones Show in 2018 that she apparently wrote not one, but two of country music's all-time classics on the same day? Yep, both I Will Always Love You and our next pick, Jolene, were apparently composed by Dolly within a 24-hour period, and we're just flabbergasted at the genius of it all. And I can easily understand how you could easily take my man, but you don't know what he means to me, Jolene. Chip Young's hooky guitar work is the glue that holds Jolene together, as Dolly sings her heart out about a woman she feels has designs on her man. It's a short and not-so-sweet slice of crossover country perfection. Number 4. Mama Tried Merle Haggard and the Strangers the world of outlaw country has many classic heroes, including Waylon Jennings, David Allen Coe, and Johnny Paycheck. Merle Haggard also deserves mention in that distinguished company, thanks to his genre-defining work on songs like Okie from Muskogee and our next entry, Mama Tried. The first thing I remember knowing was a lonesome whistle blowing. There's a sense of futility to the song of a life destined for danger, despite the best intentions of the narrator's parents. The evocative beauty of Mama Tried and its acoustic bass is undercut by the stabs of lead guitar of The Strangers' Roy Nichols. Your old daddy, rest his soul, left my mom a heavy load. While the ride cymbal accompaniment of drummer Eddie Burris lends the chorus of Mama Tried a jauntiness that makes it all the more memorable. That leaves only me to blame cause Mama Tried. Number 3. Crazy, Patsy Cline in the world of country music, there's sadness, and then there's the near inescapable melancholy that is Crazy by Patsy Cline. I'm crazy for feeling so lonely. Patsy Cline takes the Willie Nelson pen tune and makes it irrevocably her own, and we challenge anyone to take a listen without feeling those teardrops fall. Patsy's voice is smoky, bluesy, and mournful backed by a choral and piano accompaniment that makes Crazy the kind of song that works in many different settings. I'm crazy for trying and crazy for crying. It works in a dimly lit bar, perhaps while drowning one's sorrow or personal demons, 
but it also works perhaps as a coping mechanism for grief. Best listened to on headphones in the dark, allowing Klein to sing us the blues in her own inimitable fashion. Number 2. He Stopped Loving Her Today George Jones The role of producer Billy Sherrill cannot be overstated when it comes to how it helped make the careers of some incredibly talented people. He said, I'll love you till I die. George Jones was one of those people, a voice of his generation that helped lay the groundwork for all of country music throughout his work in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. It was Cheryl, however, that convinced Jones to take on I Stopped Loving Her Today in 1980. Just as the singer's career was in the midst of a slump, you know, she came to see him one last time. Oh, and we all wondered if she would. Jones's dead-eye performance and Cheryl's giant, cavernous production style helped the song shoot off like a rocket, becoming, in the minds of many, the best country song ever recorded. He stopped loving her today. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. I Walk the Line – Johnny Cash For many, the voice of Johnny Cash is the voice of country music, and it's difficult to challenge that argument. This becomes particularly true when listening to the man's classic discography, featuring such hits as Ring of Fire and our number one pick, I Walk the Line. I keep a close watch on this heart of mine. It took three tries for I Walk the Line to become Cash's first number one Billboard hit, but the end results display how much the song has entered the cultural zeitgeist when music fans tend to think of old school country music. I keep you on my mind both day and night. Maybe it's the Man in Black's deadpan delivery or those iconic lyrics, but I Walk the Line never fails to lift our spirits every time we hear it. Because you're mine, I walk the line. What other songs could have made this list? Let us know in the comments. You've got a new Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.